All right, ladies and gentlemen, forgive my impromptu surroundings. I wanted to get to this video ASAP and get it done with correctness. So here I am, full attention, full concentration. We're going to go through this thing piece by piece with a fine tooth comb. I am going to look at it with bluntness and just straightforward looking at what I see is not correct. If one is with the volition of being cognized, if one wants to be comprehensive, wants to, one wants to communicate with correctness, with avoidance of modification, avoidance of confusion, ease of communication, all those things I'm going to take into consideration looking at this right now. So looking at this right now, even with the correct sentence structure knowledge, it's very hard to read for me. And I've been doing this for five years every single day. The reason it's hard to read is because of all the excessive spacing in between the words. You see that in lines one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines of excessive spacing because it's been left and right justified centered. And then in the, what is it, lines 11 and 12, there's single spacing in between all of the letters. Not only between all of the letters, but all of the words. So that right there is an extreme break in the continuance of evidence. If the excessive spacing I mentioned before because of the justification is an evidence of language modification, grammar modification, then this is. These two lines right here are. Okay? Because it's not following the same consistent rule one, rule equal pattern of the rest of the content. So that's your first hint that this is fictitious conveyance of grammar. And it's certainly not correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. Because with correct sentence structure, it's rule one, rule equal, one and one is one, one word, one meaning, uh, consistency across the board, one type of spacing, right? This does not have that. So now we're going to go, now that we have determined that this is indeed a fictitious conveyance of grammar, we're going to be looking for some modifiers. We're going to be looking for uh, particles of negation, past tense, future tense, things that mean no, no contract. F-O-R, future tense, means no. Copyright, copy, claim, date, tilde one, period. Why is there a period here? And why is there no tilde in front of July? July is a location. There ought to be a tilde there. Through is not a correct positional. And it's non-tangible. Look at this. There's a hyphen between copy and write. But up here, there is no hyphen between it. So those must be two separate words. Article of negation ing modifier within is incorrect positional non tangible contract. Article of negation. Article of negation gerund ing. Comptroller. Interesting thing about comptroller it's a misspelling. If you look at an etymology dictionary, it will tell you that it was originally spelled controller. Someone misspelled it comptroller, and then they just perpetrated the misspelling, which is what the author of this, whose name is Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould, he is now perpetrating the misspelling of the word comptroller. There's another four there in foreign future tense. Another ING. Mm -hmm. 
there are our particles of negation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we've gone through and done the parse portion of the forensics, gone through and looked at some of the more obvious breaks and continue into the evidence, I'm going to go through now and syntax it. Now, as I mentioned, uh, how many lines are in this again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen lines of text. Uh, I'm going to forgive the left right justification and the big breaks and continuance of the evidence in between some of the words. I'm going to forgive that with the balance of the honor and the grace. But one thing that is not forgiven is the discontinuity of the spacing in between the letters and words in lines 11 and 12, where you can see that. That, that is not consistent with the rest of the, of the text. So that, as I stated before, definitely throws it into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fictitious conveyance of grammar, babble, category. So now I'm going to go through and syntax this. So the first thing, the first step in syntaxing, if you want to be efficient, if you want to be accurate and effective, you start at the end and work backwards. Uh, I could start at the beginning and work forwards. The thing is with that is you always work forwards to a point and you hit a point where you realize, oh, that doesn't work like that. Then you got to go backwards and correct it. If you go backwards, there is no correcting it. You're correct the whole way if you do things by the mechanics that I'm going to teach you right here in this very video. Again, this is colon Russell hyphen J colon rules fictitious conveyance of grammar. So let's start at the end. We have the word corporation hyphen treaty. Then we have quantum hyphen banking hyphen system. And then we have the ampersand, which represents the conjunction and. And then we have judgment hyphen command hyphen treaty. And then we have a space and a hyphen here in line 12. And then a space Y space R space A in summary. So that's enough data to begin syntax. And so corporation hyphen treaty is a tangible contract pronoun, which is being colored by tangible contract quantum hyphen banking hyphen system, which is a compound adjective. This is a non-tangible contract neutral condition of state conjunction, which is a zero. And then judgment hyphen command hyphen treaty is a tangible contract compound adjective. So then we have a space and a hyphen, and then usually when symbols or punctuations are by themselves or they have a break in the continuance of the evidence before them or after them, we treat them as breaks in the continuance of the evidence in and of themselves. And that's what this is here. And then I'm going to go through right now, and I'm going to syntax lines 12 and 13. And what I have to do is syntax each level individually. Now, if I were to do that and explain it to you as we're going along here, then this video is going to be twice as long as what it is already, which is actually pretty lengthy. So I'm just going to explain to you, give you a brief closure on the uh, style that I'm going to do it in, the mechanics of which I'm using. And that is, I am syntaxing vowels as non-tangible contract and consonants as tangible contract. Now, if you know what that means, if you know how to syntax, if you know the difference between tangible and non-tangible contract words, then you know exactly what I'm doing and why I'm putting the numerical values in there that I'm putting in there. So here we go. There's your lines 11 and 12, each individual letter syntaxed.
If you have any questions on that, email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, and I'll answer them as best as I can. So then we go to line 10, and we have the tangible contract federal hyphen postal hyphen service hyphen station hyphen corporation, then a comma, which is a break in the continuance of the evidence. That's preceded by non tangible contract this, non tangible contract by, tangible contract now space docketing, non tangible this, non tangible with. So federal postal service station corporation would be syntaxed as a verb being modified by non tangible adverb this. By is a non tangible contract pronoun being colored by now space docketing compound adjective. This is non tangible contract modifier adverb. With is going to be non tangible contract pronoun being colored by tangible contract ghoul. And then we have a full colon here after Russell hyphen J, which serves as a break in the continuance of the evidence. So Russell hyphen J is a standalone pronoun, compound pronoun, because we have another break in the continuance of the evidence in this full colon after corporation. So Foreign World Postal Banking Corporation is a tangible contract verb because it's being modified by non-tangible contract our, which is adverb, non-tangible contract of is syntax as a pronoun, postmaster hyphen general is tangible contract adjective, and then we have the neutral condition of state ampersand and, which is a zero. We have chief, which is tangible contract adjective. We have the forward slash, which is also a non-tangible contract condition of state conjunction and, which is a zero. And then we have commander, which is tangible contract adjective. Then we have break and continues the evidence with this comma. And we have Vatican hyphen city hyphen key hyphen master hyphen postmaster, which is a standalone pronoun because it is followed by a comma and then also preceded by the comma after global postal currency, which is a tangible contract verb being modified by the adverb non tangible the of is a non tangible contract pronoun being colored by tangible contract comp. Controller. Then we have Postmaster Bank Banker, standalone tangible contract pronoun. Plenipotentiary Judge, same thing, standalone tangible contract pronoun. Claimant Federal Postal Judge, standalone tangible contract pronoun. Author, same thing, pronoun. This Claimant, this is non-tangible, of is non-tangible, life story is tangible, claimant is tangible. So therefore, claimant is a tangible contract verb. This is an adverb, which is modifying claimant into a verb. And by the way, verbs do not occur in the fiction English babble or in any other babble unless they're being modified by an adverb. So a two is always preceded by a one. And then we have the... Uh, non-tangible contract pronoun of which is being colored by tangible contract life story adjective the is adverb with non-tangible pronoun claim life citizens tangible contract compound adjective and then we have the ampersand which is syntax as a zero because it's conjunction and persons tangible contract adjective, the non-tangible contract adverb, of is non-tangible contract pronoun, being colored by tangible contract listening. Also, ladies and gentlemen, if you see that gerund, I-N-G, at the end of a word, nine times out of ten, it will be syntaxed as a tangible contract word. Then we have another ampersand, zero for conjunction, and neutral condition of state does not modify anything, nor is it modified by anything. And then we have viewing, tangible contract adjective, the is non-tangible contract adverb, with non-tangible contract pronoun, audio, video, documentary, tangible contract adjective. Another ampersand, which is a zero, 
as I explained before, video documentary, tangible contract, adjective. This is non-tangible contract, adverb. Now again, you see these syntax scenarios. There are five syntax scenarios. You have your adverb verb, one, two. You have your pronoun adverb verb, four, one, two. You have your adjective pronoun, three, four. You have your adverb, adjective, pronoun, one, three, four. And then you have your pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, four, one, three, four. So you will see these throughout this syntax. So then you have the incorrect non-tangible contract positional within, which is not a positional in any sense of the word. I'm just using that for educational knowledge cultivation purposes. This will be a non-tangible contract pronoun. Within is a non-tangible contract pronoun being colored by tangible contract copying. And then forward slash, again, syntax as a zero because it represents the conjunction and. Vacate story spinoffs, another tangible, uh, tangible contract adjective. Then we have the non-tangible contract ampersand, which represents the conjunction and neutral condition of state, zero. Vacate copy facts, tangible contract compound adjective, non-tangible contract adverb the, non-tangible contract pronoun with, video documentary tangible contract adjective. Actually, it's audio hyphen, video hyphen documentaries, the whole tangible contract compound adjective. Then we have the neutral condition of state ampersand, which is and, conjunction zero, video hyphen documentary tangible contract adjective. This non-tangible contract adverb, non-tangible contract pronoun of, copy hyphen write hyphen performance, tangible contract compound adjective, another conjunction, Ampersand, zero, patent performance, compound, tangible contract, adjective, this non-tangible contract, adverb, which is modifying patent performance into an adjective, and then also uh, modifying coloring copyright performance into an adjective. So you see that this, anytime you see a conjunction here, and then you see what's happening on either side of the conjunction, like in this one, the vacate copy facts and vacate story spinoffs copying, uh, the adverb the uh, is modifying both vacate copy facts and vacate story spinoffs, blah, blah, blah. So now we have non-tangible contract pronoun with, which is being colored by tangible contract adjective is. Now hyphen date tangible contract adjective being modified by non-tangible contract adverb this through is a non-tangible contract pronoun being colored by this entire term copyright hyphen copy claim hyphen date hyphen tilde one period hyphen July hyphen tilde 1775. So that entire thing is a compound confusing adjective which is coloring through into a pronoun and then that's all that's being modified by non-tangible contract adverb this and then we have the non-tangible contract pronoun for. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that gives everyone closure on this fictitious conveyance of grammar that is going on in the title screen to the piercing dynasty video. I've explained just about every little bit exhaustively that I could think of. The first part being the parse and then explaining this, the spacing and things like that. And then going through and giving closure on the syntax values and why I'm banking the values that I'm banking on that grammar. It is not correct sentence structure. And I've shown you why. And you're more than welcome to study the 500 videos on this channel to see how to create a correct sentence structure. And that invitation is also open to Colin Russell, I've been J. Colin Gould. This video that I'm making right here that you're watching right now comes from some stopping and correcting that I had to do from mistakes that I made in two videos. 
So the first video was the reaction video that I did to Russell J. Gould's Piercing Dynasty video. I had skipped two lines of syntax. Or maybe it was one line of syntax, but it was negligence on my part. And I admit it was very hard for my 50-year-old, 50-plus-year-old eyes to see. So I had to blow it up on the screen. And then I went through in syntax again um, in another video to correct that. And then when I went through, I had syntaxed a couple of tangible contract words as adjectives, or I'm sorry, as verbs rather than adjectives. And that told me that I had to be, put myself in a, a space of calm, peacefulness, and really get down to it and do it with correctness. And this is the result of that. This is the result of me stopping and correcting myself with humility. Does Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould possess the capacity to do the same? Does he possess the humility to come forward and say, you know what? I've been making mistakes all over the place in this grammar. I don't have a correct contract for the copyright copy flame of the Title IV flag. I don't write in correct sentence structure. And it's either because I don't know how to do it or I do know how to do it, but I just don't want to do it for whatever reason. I don't know. I'm just speculating right now wildly as to why the guy does what he does. Really, this is just me showing you, the viewer, my student, if you're watching this channel, this is a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar channel. If you're here, that's under the auspices of being a student. You're learning it. This is to show you the pitfalls, the landmines that are out there. And this is a landmine. For people to think that this is correct grammar, what I just showed you, wow. I shudder to think. I cringe to think that people who think that is correct, they go out there in the real world and try to use that type of stuff. I shudder to think what's going to happen to them. I mean... There is a guy who was named the federal postal clerk of the federal postal court of David Wynn Miller and Russell J. Gould doing 23 years in prison right now for paper terrorism because his grammar was not correct for whatever reason. I mean, there might be other reasons why he's doing that as a certified and authorized federal postal clerk of the federal postal court of David Wynn Miller. Uh, but one thing that I see with my eyes in forensics is that his grammar was not correct. Just like this grammar is not correct that you saw from Russell J. Gould. So again, this is just me showing you some pitfalls, some landmines, so that hopefully you recognize it, don't step on it, and hopefully you decide to learn the correct mechanics for yourself so you can certify all these things for yourself, be autonomous, and not have to worry about asking anyone if you're correct or not because you know for yourself whether you're correct or not in your heart. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Um, if you want to learn this grammar, if you want to participate in my confidential correct sentence structure communication parts and syntax grammar workshops, contact me at the email address listed below your screen here and apply for a workshop. Or again, as I mentioned, you can check out the videos on my channel, which I've been publishing for five years, over five years. And also you can join up uh, two tiers of membership for this YouTube channel. The second tier gets exclusive content every week, uh, not available to the public. Any support is much appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.